Hello and welcome to Open All Ours, a QPR podcast. David Fraser here. We, there's there's loads of us in this room tonight. Oh, sorry, Paul's telling me to slow down. There's loads of us in this room. There's five of us. We've got an interview. It's all a bit strange recording a podcast in. We are in the shadow of the Emirates, aren't we? And it's it's they're at home to West Brom tonight, and that's all a bit weird. Having I just to pass. got pity looks. Yeah, what with your QPR gear on and yeah, you're passing was, all the it, Arsenal fans. I was in the pub and it was just had to be QPR gear on. And they're kind of, this guy's looking at me like sadly. And he's like, going, what division are you in these days? It's like, oh, well, it doesn't matter what division we were in. We have won as much as you have recently. <laughs> Not true. And, I mean, that, 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 that literally isn't true. But I like, I like the, the it, mouth it that you matter. gave him. It doesn't matter because they don't count the FA Cup and things. So it doesn't matter. They only count leagues and stupid things like that that we obviously we don't even dream of apart from winning the championship. So yeah, they they, they probably don't realise that winning the FA Cup is actually a trophy. Yeah, well, uh, we could go on about Arsenal, but we shan't because I haven't <laughs> don't even forget done they the gave us Steve Morrow, yet. Lee Harper, and Rose, and we yeah. paid money for them three. Gus Caesar. Uh, no, he didn't even <laughs> pay money for him. We've got him alone. If you're if you're listening to this, thank you for sticking with us already for these first two minutes. Um, but I haven't introduced anybody. So that voice, that Northern Irish voice you heard, if you are new to the podcast, is Paul Finney. Um, Evening, David. From How Independent are you? Ours. Are you still from Independent Ours? You barely talk about it anymore. I'm, I'm kind of podcast and in the Ours. Of course I am. I still pick things up. I just... I don't get a lot of time to sit on the internet and post things up anymore. Mm, that's not but, true, is it? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Okay, and uh, we also have making his debut, Dale Hart. Yes, thanks for having me, guys. That's um, all right. So, yeah, I've been a QPR fan since I was a young boy. Um, happy to be here today. I've been following you guys for just a couple of years young now. To me. Do I? Yeah. Uh, mm. Don't you definitely. I don't know disagree, much about but... what you do, but you definitely work in media because you've got the glasses and the beard. Yeah, and, and um... it's all very well taken care of. <laughs> like, am, I yeah, correct? So... am I correct? Yeah, you're on the money, really. I'm advertising, marketing. Um, so, not far. And you off. sit where at QPR? Um, I sit at PU. Um, right. So yeah, I've been my well, season ticket there for so, like, six, seven years, but. Very Last nice. year, decided not to renew, which was stupid. But I've been going since every home game since, so should have really renewed my season. Renew together. it. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure you still can. Well, yeah, welcome. they've been pestering me with emails and stuff, but yeah, I think I will renew. You're after younger people, so I got a younger one on. Yeah, very yeah, good. How old good are you, Dale? I'm 27. Blimey, so, yeah. that's taking the average age down. So somewhat, my isn't it? yeah, my era when you I first started um, going to QPR was obviously the furlongs, the gallons. Um, Marcus Bignot, so that's when I first was introduced to QPI and, you know... Okay, since, well, so. look, that's a good segue on to last Santos. week's podcast. Yeah, George Santos, if you, yeah. If you haven't listened to last week's podcast, we had Kevin Gallon here, and it was very good value, so... He liked the yeah, Weatherspoons green room. He... <laughs> like the idea we had a Weatherspoons as a green room. I like <laughs> right, that idea, okay. too. Is that where you went after? Okay. Um, no, before, you've forgotten already. And, oh, yes, true. And, and returning... Third time, fourth time? Uh, at least three, possibly uh, four. Well, you, you are a dab hand <laughs> because you effortless, effortlessly pushed the mic over to Dale when he started to speak. So you know the drill already here. Yeah, I know we share equipment here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Johnny <laughs> Mack. Um, Hello. Welcome back. And Chris Charles. Hello. That'll do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, Chris, um, you sit there with a whole lot of things to say. And you just, Jesus, I've just noticed Chris has brought his glasses with him. Right. Has he? Yeah. Well, you know, okay. he's, 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 we're all he's getting older. That's why I brought the youngster along. Yeah, we're all getting yeah, old. Yeah, he's, so, <laughs> so if you haven't listened to the podcast before, you can follow us on Twitter. You can go on our website at qprpod.co.uk, where there's all, all our old episodes, um, and you can uh, join our group on Facebook. We have a beer sponsor tonight. Pads Mason has sponsored the beers. Thank oh, you very okay. much to yeah. him. Thank you to everybody that has sponsored the beers so far. We've only got a few more uh, lined up. So if you would like to sponsor the beers one week on the and podcast cider. and cider, uh, it's very gratefully received because um, we don't charge for the podcast. So we rely on donations to help keep us going. Um, 
And we need to drink, of course. So you can go to the website. If you go to our website, qprpod.co.uk, and I think you click on one of the buttons at the top, which is support the show, and then there's the option to buy the beers. And right. if you're on a brewery, let us know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Happy so, to all beers inside us. So I think I'm right in saying that the nil-nil draw with Burton on Saturday, the match sponsors were Gowing and Percy, the skip and rubbish removal company, <laughs> I think. Which, um, and if they weren't, they were very heavily trailed around the ground before kick-off. So they picked the right game to sponsor, I think. Chris, yeah. you are a man that often comes prepared to, our po- <laughs> to this podcast, so why don't you start us off? Well, yeah, I'm, you know, I was there. I think the old slogan for the other Burton used to be, you get bags more buzz with Burton, but I don't think anyone was... Is buzzing the clothing yeah right, I don't okay. think anyone was buzzing on Saturday from either side I mean they clearly came with a game plan uh, I mean the first half they they, they you know threatened um, you know early doors had a couple of efforts but then second half they were quite happy with the point shut up shop which fair enough you can't blame them I mean they, they did the same at Norwich came away with a nil nil draw there they beat Fulham 2-1 so there are no pushovers I think I think everyone was expecting for some reason for us to steamroll them um, maybe this is last week's podcast I did actually. Well, I listened to the first seventy minutes or whatever, and then I had, to, I had stuff to do. But um. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't that long. Yeah. But yeah, it was um, quite long. Yeah, I, I, I just, I don't know. There was a very sort of Luongo-sized shape missing yes, in midfield, so. um, and you, that, that it made such a big difference. Um, and I don't know, they just didn't seem to be, for the first time really this season I've seen, there didn't seem to be any plan, certainly first off. No one really knew what they're doing. Connor Washington is clearly um, suffering from a lack of confidence because there's a couple of times he, he did well, got himself through, and then instead of having a go, he, he squared it to uh, Mackie or whoever's mm, next yeah. to him. Um, and I'm, personally, I think maybe it's time to you know give him a little run out in the 23s and maybe give Silla a start. Oh, Silla. That's an interesting one. Well, to be to be honest with you, oh sorry, you're asking me, Paul. Uh, <laughs> um, do you know I I I didn't like Saturday. It was one of the worst games of football. Why are you? Sorry, I stick? found like this pointing stick, and, and that's who I'm pointing to. You like some this, Egypt? This ha- joke doesn't land if you're listening to the podcast. So carry on. You look like a weirdo from Harry Potter. You know, American tourists carry on, hang, carry on, hang around the nine and three quarter stop at King's Cross. <laughs> They're a bunch of weirdos, I can tell you. Anyway, not just Americans, there's all sorts. Um, it was bizarre because <laughs> they could have been two or three up if they had had a decent striker. Let's be honest. Our defended at times was a wee bit lacklustre. Bidwell just can't seem to get that cross over to damage people. Or if he's not getting the cross over, we're certainly not coming in on the other side of it to, to hurt defences. And that's a worry. And also, as my mechanic pointed out to me today, at Collins Motors in Port Royal, just opposite Wilson Junction, who fixed my van today, thank you very much, Freeman and Pavel aren't passing to each other for some reason. I have that down no. there. Freeman won't pass to Pavel. And vice that, versa. My brother mentioned that to me yeah. and a couple of other people And it's a bit of a weird that. one, that, because at the end of the day, look, do you know what really annoyed me about Saturday? More than the game, because I was debating Brexit on Twitter. I was that bored. And the meaning of life and birds and bees and um, was it the chicken or the egg? Anything that I could think of to take my eyes off what was... A pretty rubbish game, but it's a first game. You're lucky to get a Wi-Fi signal in uh, Loftus Road. I don't, mate. I've got 20 gig. Um, So, on data. um, (laughs) How many gig have you got, Chris? Let's talk about it rather than this game. So, listen, the the thing is, what what worried me, though, Chris hit his knee on the head, with no strikers in form, you say bring on Silla. Silla was absolutely awful against Middlesbrough. If Silla can't come on against Burton and rough them up a bit, then we've got serious problems on people that actually want to push for that number nine shirt that number ten shirt whatever because none of them are actually putting a claim in for it and that includes Smith who's causing havoc but there's no one to come in and take that shirt we need someone to actually start knocking that ball in there otherwise we're relying too much in the midfield too much pressure in it. and Batista's shot why was no one following it yeah well that's what Gannon said last yeah. week about the strikers well, wasn't it and he, he was did. he was bang on really I, I, I know what you're saying about Silver, of course but if you look at his strike rate a lot of the, a lot of those are coming off the bench but look at well. his body language Chris yeah I know but if Sorry. he's giving the comf- I, I just think give him a go give him, give, tell him he's going to get a run of three or four games he's going to start those and it might sort of give him the confidence or the, I know what you mean he looks like a moody so and so sometimes but we haven't got many options so and I, the Washington as much as I love him and I, I, mm. I really hope that he'll come yeah. good and start banging them in but at some point we've got to think well let's, let's give some time. how long do we yeah. wait how long do you D- wait Dale sure I think you've knocked it in the head there really um, we started with three strikers pretty much didn't we we had Mackie Washington 
um, Smith. Yeah, and Smith. Um, Smith. No, sorry, no, we started Smith with, came on. Sorry, we started with oh, Mackie sorry. and Washington, season, then we sorry. brought on Smith yeah. and Siddler. So we had three strikers, and you thought we were going to get two goals, but mm. the final touch is lacking, definitely. The way I perceive it is that Washington... Is that the final touch or the final ball? I mean, you touched yeah. on it. Bidwell couldn't get anything over all afternoon, could he? And he was up against, possibly... The one of the weakest fullbacks we've played this season, where he was getting lots of room mm. and the ability to cross was there. And you said they just even take it two steps further and put a low one in, smash it, but he just does the same cross game after game. And, and they'd yeah. say, no, and they beat us up in the middle of the park as well, mm. despite what everyone says. And that was a worry in this, the number six. But you know what really upset me on Saturday, and I'm going to be honest, was the booing. I don't get it. We haven't lost at home this season. Yeah, it was crap. It was awful. It was, it was terrible football. I but didn't I didn't hear any booing. There was loads of me, and also the abuse of Furlong was getting is ridiculous. I so mean, this was where. What remind me. Well, I sit in Africa Road, and I could hear boos. I don't know why you couldn't hear them. There was quite a lot, a lot of boos. loft. I didn't I'm hear any loft. boos. There was a bit of yeah. resignation. Johnny, no boos at all. Really, no. right? there was definitely boos Africa Road. Maybe they were booing you. <laughs> <laughs> I would be, but also, what, why is why are people singling Furlong out for abuse? Not abuse, but kind of like oh, deep size thing. He's a kid. Can you imagine if you're a kid going to work every day and someone standing behind you going, "You're shit. You're rubbish. You're crap." These we, we, we've got on. A, he was no better or worse than anyone else on the pitch. But the sad thing is, Johnny, we've been saying it for years. We need young players to come in. Agreed. Now, what's the point of getting these young players in and then hammering them? It's no point. It's pointless. Please stop it. Give them some backing. Don't sing with only two furlongs and then boo the hell out of them. That's just ridiculously stupid. We've got to get behind these kids because we're going to ruin their confidence otherwise. Well, he's had a few games out, hasn't he? Obviously, we started the perch at the start of the season. He wasn't great. Mm. But last year, towards the end, Rochek and Furlan were linking up pretty nicely. So he's had a That's few true. games out, probably not that match fit yet, I'd say. He's probably started, what, two games since he's been brought back into the loop. So it's given a bit of time. The guy's got a lot of, you know, he's got bags of potential. I think he's going to get potential. time, isn't he? Because yeah. there's not very many. Yeah, not got many no. options. other options. <laughs> I, didn't um, think, I didn't think Perch was that bad at the start of the season, actually. I mean, I think he had, he, he's always got, you know, he's about... You know, one kick away from a sending off, but mm. that's the warm up to, compared to some of last season. I, I didn't, I didn't think he was that bad, but I, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've always rated Furlong. I think you know, but maybe his sort of position is a bit off sometimes. I was, I just wonder whether in later life and career he's going to be moving, playing further up the pitch because that Ooh. seems to be more of his strength. Johnny, so yeah, I mean, not want to go over too much of what's already been said re Saturday, but I do feel a couple of things. So. I think first thing is careful what we wish for because I think people have been slagging Anua and, as you say, Furlong and other players and, and Perch. Perch has been a, a boo boy as well. I think as these players have got injured, we're now seeing the depth in the team and actually these guys are not as bad as what I think people interpret them to be. Um, so I think that's the first thing. I, I, clearly our defence, the, the, the depth is, is not as, as strong as we'd like it to be and that's probably the same across the team. And, you know, Luongo not being there as well clearly made a difference with that three. I think mm. Yeni in the first half, I cannot understand what yeah. he is doing in training to warrant a start above potentially Manning because he offered... He offered he offered, he offered, he offered, he offered, he offered yeah. absolutely nothing to us. And I think it just upset the, the dynamic of the three, you know, in the middle that was mm. there. The two. And every time, I think what I've seen at home is when the three, uh, Luongo, um, Scoen and... Um, Freeman together they play quite closely together or Sko and Sitz and the other two push on I think if you looked Yeni was miles away from, from the play he was never coming to collect the ball yeah he didn't look for the ball at all did he didn't come to collect no. so we were no. always we were always a player we were always a player short and to your point around the crosses the crosses not coming in from both sides I think Pavel on the right hand side haven't seen him go round a man since before we signed him permanently and the quality of his balls on, on Saturday were, were poor and even when we had Smith in the middle, I think our plan B is, we saw it against Millwall, plan B was three at the back and then three up front. Mm. And if it doesn't work, we're, you know, we don't, mm. we see it, we seem two dimensional. Plan A is the starting 11 and then Smith and Silla come on with three at the back and, you know. <coughs> well, it, on, on Yeni, that is not the position to, well, to no, play him. Yeah. However, even given that, he was still awful. And he, he was like one of those Sunday league players that shouts, does loads of shouting at everybody else. You stand here, because he was doing that. So Coleman. where's his position? You stand here, position? you stand here, so he can sort of disappear and do nothing. So where is his position? Who, uh, who does he replace in the, the, from the first 11? I don't see where he... I, can't, I don't see where he fits. Mackie, that sort of position. Hasn't worked as well. But then yeah. if you take Mackie out of the side, 
what you're losing badly is someone to hassle defenders because no one yeah. else Washington and Mackey are hassling they yeah. need someone to pick it up and do something with it which I guess you, you hope that you, someone like Yenny would, would come in and do but it wasn't looking for the ball but mm. also you think with him and Silla you've got this time to alright it's not a great time but come on and show the manager he's wrong not to be putting you in the first 11 show oh. your you know they, they weren't signed for peanuts these guys they were signed for big money relatively by our standards we need them to stop performing and I think they owe Les and the management some something because they've showed a lot of faith in them and they've got to start paying that back a bit Silla against Brentford last season had one of the worst games I've seen since Dean Coney played for us um, and he, uh, old he, reference yeah, yeah. he still scored one in three last season exactly but so imagine so, what he could do if he tried kind of thing it was one of them was he, well, he, didn't, he didn't get all those goals without trying but he, he scored goals from crosses he got service mm. and these balls are not coming into the edge they're of the not, but he's not harassing not. if you looked at him on Saturday Johnny he was not harassing any defenders he, he, he was getting st- bullied out he was yeah, getting at one stage he thought he was a, outside the box yeah, but at one mi- section of the game he thought he was a, the physio he's going you alright you don't you know and he's got around the players who are injured going oh I'll stretch your leg for you. I mean, he's way. definitely got a penchant for going down. He, the first thing yeah, he did yeah, ten yeah, seconds after coming on was win a free kick, which was like slightly dubious. I thought probably mm. one of the only things the ref <laughs> gave us all afternoon. See, I want these lads yeah. to do well because I think the new criteria for players is brilliant, and how we're doing it is marvellous, and it's a really good thing. But. I really want them to succeed. But there's also, there's something there's there. a, if they are the plan B, there's a lot of pressure on these guys to come on every game when we are, n- you know, nil nil, so one one, losing obvious. two two. It, it feels like it's too obvious, and the pressure is like these guys are going to come on, they're going to dig us out of a hole. The games that we should be ahead. I mean, without going back two podcasts ago, we should never have been two nil down against you know Millwall, Millwall. To, to, to have to to have no. to, to have to bring it back, and we should probably never have been nil nil to at home to Burton with. You know, half an hour to go to bring these guys on. But in the mugs, though, I mean, they, they, you can see their game plan is to, to stifle you and, and to, to pretty much get in your case and stop you from passing, stop them. They, they definitely broke up our midfield by a long way. And that was, whereas our plan is over the top, get behind them. And then when you've got Bidwell putting them there, cross as a keeper, gets at number six, knocks it out. And if it gets that got, far. Well, they were, oh, we got bullied. Yeah. We got bullied. They're Saturday. a big team. I was quite surprised he didn't start with Smith for that game. Um, they were huge, weren't they? They were. They were a very big team. I mean, we didn't win a, a, a high ball until Smith came on. Give, no, mm. exactly. But given the way Oli, you know, said he sort of meticulously prepares, prepares for each game last season, hence all these changes and all the rest of it, it seemed like he didn't really. I know, you know, we got injuries, particularly Luongo, but it didn't seem like he po- probably prepared for this one. The way I see it as well, I see Mill and Burton are both quite poor, and the, the last few results he had against better opposition um, it's due to the high press we've been pressing teams high up the pitch mm. but with Mill and Burton we've had more time on the ball and not really not know like what to do with the ball just struggled too much time um, and I think their game plan on Saturday was to neutralise neutralise us and pretty much got away with it well that's what I mean then but that's that's yeah. you know if teams will have done their homework and they'll know what we what we were about what we try and do so in turn Ollie's got to think well if teams are coming to stifle us what, what how, how what's the best way to deal with it and it didn't what? seem yeah. like on did Saturday. you see his quotes after yes it, it was the worst first half performance I've seen well I think <laughs> since the last know. time he said that since the last time I would argue uh, for the, the worst, worst, worst half this season uh, home. This, no, this, yeah, we, we played into their hands we're notoriously rubbish at QPR at beating anyone we're expected to beat Hmm. And I'm he's not, a manager. not quite sure about that. Uh, yeah, I made what I thought were positive changes. Did it work? Nearly. We pinned them in during the second half and had more and more chances. I'm pleased with the clean sheet. Fair enough. We could easily have slipped up. They could have counter-attacked with the pace they've got. But also, I, th- I think without Luongo, who is a good attacking threat, who carries the ball through the lines and, and, and creates space for other players, I don't think Freeman had a particularly good game. No, cre- he cre- didn't. Creatively. So that's two creative players not... You know, not not creating chances for us. So well, where this, else is it going to come? Where else is it going to come? Him and Pavel bothers me because okay. it, it started to be mentioned. I've heard it mentioned a couple of times uh, yeah, that they don't yeah. pass to each other, and it's like what you said before. They're both, you know, arguably creative, like like both creative players. Well, imagine how good they could actually be if they bloody passed to each other. Well, there's somebody yeah. somebody from the local rag, whoever uh, interviews Holloway after the game, needs to needs to ask him and just say, is there a problem between these two? Because yeah, um, that's the best way to find out, isn't it? I'd, well, I'd... we 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 get listened to every now and again at the club. So why doesn't someone at the club say <laughs> yeah. that fans have cottoned onto it? We're onto it. So can they pass to each other, please? <laughs> Here we're going to see this week on the, on the website is them two yeah. arms around each other at a, at, a, at a club somewhere, <laughs> like I don't know some club. 
<laughs> What's clubs these days? I, I, I don't go clubbing. Since you've been clubbing for The last time I went to the club was, was the Hippodrome in, in, or the Embassy Club years ago when we used to have Frisbee Fox Night. Anyway, I don't know. But it, it, there's something going on there because it clearly... I'm not saying it's personal. It might be a lack of understanding. It might be someone's not shouting for it. But Pavel was standing there on Saturday night like a few times. Yeah. And like, why are you not passing to me? And we went for the narrowest of options. I mean, and, but what worries me more than anything, I've already said it, when Matisse hit that really good shot, no one followed it up. Mm. And that was way outside the box. Well, to be fair, probably no one was anticipating no. that he was going to let flow with the 20 But you should anticipate, though. You should anticipate. The Beatles, what, what would Gary Bad- in, That would have been one of the goals of the season. Yeah, but yeah, to be, but as a striker or as a, an attacking player, you should be thinking, right, even if I'm only player in here, because their defence didn't follow it, go in. Yeah. That's right. what Gary Bannister used to do. But we're going to go to the interview. We're, we're talking to Peter Hucker in a minute, ex-QPR goalie. Before we do, last last point I've got on the game, uh, Loa Loa was dropped, having turned up late to training mm. on Friday. Right? Didn't wrong? That. You didn't know that? Breaking news. Johnny didn't realise that. Don't you, Johnny? I don't really find um, too many news feeds. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, if that's, the, if that's the way he's, he's setting his stall out, which it seems to be, then... You've got to follow through with it, haven't you? So, you know, it's like with your, your kids at home. If you, if you tell them not to do something or you'll do this, if you don't do it, then they'll keep doing it. So maybe it is. I mean, he did put in the caveat that, you know, obviously, unfortunately, his father died a few weeks ago. So um, if it was related to that, then I'll have a chat with him and sort him out. So I'm glad he, he did make that point. I'm still not sure about whether you need to make that sort of thing public, though. That, that's no. my only thing about it. But, yeah. So I, I, Wheeler wasn't around, so I didn't know if he was injured or... No, he scored. Or, it's like you scored in a away game, you really don't do that, and you're not playing next week. That'll teach you. <laughs> was it an so did I miss anything there? I don't, don't know. I don't know. You, we said this last week, you never get told about injuries really mm. anymore. But he you? was good to some debate about something, because he seems to be very pro talking about politics. Yeah. So Fancy that, Paul. I can't well, wait to have him on the podcast. That. He might have something to come with. People about, with an opinion. What about the Northern Ireland lad? Which one? Smith. The one from Binfield, yeah. Linfield, sorry, oh, Linfield. Linfield. All the habits die hard. Well, yeah. they said he's gonna, he's not making the first team yet. They said that when they said oh, yeah. Okay. He's, normally, for Aris, my experience will count for something here. Normally, Irish league lads, if they don't feel in the first five months, it, it takes a wee while to get because don't forget you come from part time to full time football, mm. so it will take a while. But I didn't, I didn't realise Linfield I, was part time. I honest. didn't realise we were full time. <laughs> hey. Wait, right, the, the, right. The, the Irish League is part time. <laughs> Let me use the first joke of the night, ting, to um, break so we can call Peter Hucker, ex QPR goalie, um, had a very distinguished career with us, and we wanted to catch up with him on a, on a number of things. So hopefully, by the magic of Harry's editing, here is Peter Hucker now. Okay. Hey, hey, Peter, it's Chris. How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, I'm very well. Um, good. I just wanted to go straight into this, um, but Alex Smith is our goalkeeper. Uh, QPR yeah. fans rate him as the, the best in the division. Is that just because we're getting misty eyed because he's our keeper, or, or do you think you can... he really is that good? Um, well, he's got to be up there with the top, definitely. I mean, I've seen him play a few times. He looks very confident, uh, makes some great saves, good at stopping penalties, which is always a bonus. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's got to be up there in the top two or three. Because, I, I mean, I was just wondering, because, like I say, we, you know, hold him in very high regard. And I think a lot of people almost expected uh, or resigned to losing him in the transfer window. But nothing seemed to materialise. I didn't hear any, any interest. Um, so I just wondered, do you, do you think he is, is good enough for the Premier League? Well, I think he's probably good enough, which is always a worry. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's how long he's prepared to wait. I think. I mean, uh, my advice keeps him on a high wage, long contract, and at least you're going to get some money back, Grim. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's hard for goalies, Peter, because there's only only 20 goalies can play every week in the Premier League. Yeah. So if you're a good if you're a good keeper, you still yeah. may not get a, pre- a place at a Premier League club. So 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 if you're at a decent a decent club on a decent contract, you, you're perhaps more inclined to stick around than if you're a midfielder or, or striker. Absolutely. I mean, um, I'm not being funny, but uh, there's also also that case at the club. You know, you've got a de- quite a decent uh, um, replacement for him. How long is he going to hang around if he's not playing? Mm. Um, I'm, I had it when I played. You know, every time every time I thought I'm going to move up, you know, up a bit, they signed someone else. Time and time again. 
So you have to, you have to, at some stage, make that decision for yourself. Where do you stay or do you go? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting you said that about our number two because I mean, a lot of <clears throat> school of thought was because obviously we we we've got this new strategy now, which is you know, as in going back to basics and buying, uh, you know decent t talent and trading them up and um you know going about it the right way in other words rather than spunking loads of money on uh, you know yeah <laughs> uh, yeah about <laughs> time yeah yeah um but but uh, you know and so many school of thought was that we should cash in on him as he's our prize asset and then use the money to develop um to bring in more players uh yeah do ya so so you'd rather take three or four one nil defeats or two one defeats than one nil wins. Well, that's what I'm saying to you. I mean, do you think? I that... think yeah, carry you on. keep him as you keep him as long as you can, as as long as he's as long as he's happy. He's the one who's going to make the decision ultimately. What attributes does a keeper need these days in comparison to, you know, the period in which you played in? How's the, how's the game played for a keeper? Uh, how's the game changed, I beg your pardon, for a keeper? Well, I mean, it's not changed that much. Yeah, the balls have got a little bit lighter. They might move around a little bit. Um, you have to be able to play on the floor. You know, you, you have to be able to use your feet. You have to be able to kick the whole length of the pitch, you know. So there, there are a few things. But ultimately, the goal's the same size. The aim from the opposition is still the same. And for me, just keep the ball out of the goal. It's, it's where Sounds you start. Simple. Keep the ball out of the goal. And if you can catch it, which he does quite well, as compared to a lot of keepers uh, nowadays, uh, so much the better. If you can retain possession or, or get possession quickly and start an attack, that's great. You know, all these keepers who punch and parry, it's not so much that they're putting the ball back in a dangerous place, they've taken their own possession away. Catch the, catch the ball, you've now got possession. What, what, what I wanted to ask you, Peter, sorry, it's Paul here, is do you think goalkeepers these days are getting a bit more sensible? Do you remember in your generation you were all a bit mad because you had to be? <laughs> they all seem very, very sensible these days, and I think it's right. ruining the game. Right. <laughs> it's quite simple, and that's just the law changes. You know, if I stood out at somebody's feet, I took the ball, I took the player, I took four or five of our own players. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it really didn't matter. We were nutty. We would we would dive in at people's feet and not worry about getting kicked. Can't do that nowadays. Cannot do that nowadays. You go near a player and he falls over, mate. That's a penalty. Um, you know, you lit you literally. My thing was, if I didn't take the ball off of him cleanly then he wasn't going to get up to get it before me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that, that's a true, that's that's just a true thing. And you look at a lot, a lot of the keepers from that age, the era, you know, very good at coming out one, very good, at, but you used to take everybody out. That, to be, was a, that, to, that was the way to do it. To be fair, yourself and Parksy had absolutely no fear. No. Well, I don't think there were many goalkeepers of that era that did. Um, you know, if you, if you look around them all, um, they, they were all. They would all come out at people's feet, and I'm sure they would now. But they're just so scared of touching anybody um, because it's, it's a penalty and possibly a sending off. Um, so, Who, who's yeah, your favourite so keeper to... in the modern era, like these days, Peter? Mine. Yeah. I, I don't think you can go much further than De, De Gea and Larice. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, they they are, you know, by far the best. I like I like Larice because he's very confident on the ball. All right, he's gonna make a couple of rickets now and again, but he's confident to play the ball out of the year. Very, very agile, you know, some of the saves they make. But to to play in the premiership, they're all good, you know. Mm. They, they, you haven't you haven't got your Gary Sprakes anymore. Um, mm. <laughs> so they're they're all good. Uh, I was just going to ask Peter. You talk, talk about uh, the game being different back then, but it certainly changed for you when we got the plastic pitch in. How difficult yeah. was that um, in terms of judging the bounce? And I mean, I guess for you it was probably better because you gradually got used to it. But for visiting keepers, it must have been a nightmare. Yeah, I mean, it, it just depended on the weather. To be honest, I right. mean, we all know that Venable's favourite trick was to say, "All come down on a Friday night and train on our ground, so you get used to it." And then Saturday morning, have the fire engine in and soak it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, you know. 
we, we would watch them train on a Friday night, watching the ball bounce five foot over their head, yeah. you know, and, and not knowing what to do. The next morning, it was zipping past them. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was zipping past them before they knew what had happened. The, the, the fire brigade, Terry Venables managed to convince the fire brigade to come in and walk the pitch. Yeah, he used to walk the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, just drive the fire engine on and just soak it. Bloody hell. Well, oh, that was that one game, of course, when you let him fire, but fortunately, we scored five as well, so it wasn't it even yeah. itself out. Do you know what? Keep, keep, keep mentioning I, I didn't have a bad game. I just didn't touch the ball for four times. <laughs> I didn't touch the ball in the first half. Yeah. <laughs> but let him four. I mean, we, you know, we actually hit him four all at half time, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, just one of those games. The way that, so, going back to that game, in fairness, you didn't actually play that bad. In all honesty, no. it, it, it was a weird thing where you can let him five and go, do you know what? <laughs> I, it could have been 12. It was the most one side of first but, half you'll ever was, see. But it wasn't that. It couldn't have been 12. I mean, Waddle killed us first half and he did, everything he? hit went in, you know. Um, but that was it. That was their chances. Um, the, the goal they got in the second half was basically because we went at them and started tearing into them. Um, you know, you're always going to leave yourself open at the back. But, um, yeah, just one of those games. Is it the maddest Could game you've play. ever been involved with? Yeah, what does that bug rid away? It was good to play in. I enjoyed it. The second half was good, yeah. <laughs> what, what about know, the atmosphere? Well, the atmosphere was there, and, you know, but to be fair, we, we really should have won it. Well, so he... uh, we, we scored the extra goal, and where that became a, a foul or whatever he gave, I don't know. Yeah. Here's a different question, Peter. I'm sorry to drag it back. I just mentioned part of the Amber grid. What yep. the feck happened out there? What happened out there? Um, we had a tactical genius as our manager. Ah. <laughs> I thought you might say that. Yeah. It was awful, wasn't it? I think we've it was, got you speaking well, about him before, well, Peter. The way he set up was just unbelievably wrong. Just invited them to attack us. Just invited them. No, he had no stability through the midfield. He was trying to play one forward wide. We're going to play him wide. That that will that fuck them. <laughs> fox them. It just gave them two extra players in midfield. It was madness. But at that stage, can't the players just say, "Look, you know, we're going to we're going we're to change it around ourselves here and just just somebody." Well, to be fair, that's what happened at, at Newcastle. It didn't have a clue when we come in. Yeah, it didn't have a clue. It was like, it, it, to be fair, if I, if I remember rightly, he said something like, "Well, just try and try not to make it too embarrassing." <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, yeah. P- Peter, everybody enjoyed seeing you on the pitch against Ipswich the other week yep. for um, yep. the hundredth anniversary of the stadium. Tell us about the day. Uh, yeah, no, what... lovely, nice, nice to get invited back, um, and they've started doing that a little bit more on Kuka, which is um, is always nice, uh, always nice for for a good reason. Um, no, I didn't play in the first game there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first thing people say, what, what are they inviting you back for? So it's the hundredth anniversary. What was the first game like? Yeah. <laughs> <Thanks>. We lost <laughs> three 0 yeah. Right, there you go. Well, me then. No, Paul Barron was in goal that day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what? What's your thoughts on where the club is now and how the team's doing? Well, um, mixed feelings at the moment. Watched them a couple of times this season. Certainly a little bit better than last season. Starting to realise that you need a settled side to win football matches um, and stop, you know, thinking, oh, I'll put this team out to play them or I'll put this team out to play them. He should be setting his stall out and saying, you come and play us. This is how we play. You come and stop us. But last season it was all, you know, we'll change that. We'll have four changes here. We'll have five changes there. And all right, you can you can you can look back, Ollie, and say, yeah, well, I kept us up, um, which he did. Um, but I think he's got it better this season. I think he, you're right. He's going for younger players. He's going for trying to get, get a settled side. I hope because it seems to be worth it. And everyone goes, oh, boom, boom, boom. you know, don't worry about that. Uh, those games happen. Didn't concede. Didn't lose the game. Last season, it'd have been we'd lost it too now. Mm. Um, and there are always going to be mm. rubbish mm. games. There are always going to be rubbish games. Um, it's just one of those things. Wh- so, where do you think we'll end up? 
I think I think they're on the right way to to, to this season, mid mid to top. I would think eight eight to twelve. I would, I would hope for, providing nothing. You know, something drastic doesn't go wrong. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure that I'm not sure that Ollie is tactically that good. I think he's fantastic with the players. I think he's fantastic for trying to get the best out of the players. But he just looks like when things aren't happening or aren't that, he just doesn't seem to know what to do. They just revert to Fran Smith on and saying, let's go up the pitch. Well, you know, those days are long gone. He's very useful. Don't get me wrong. It turned, you know, I say milk turned quicker. Uh, <laughs> honestly, no, I have to be fair. In the air, he's fantastic. If you keep pounding, you know, keep putting it into him in the air, he's going to win more than he's going to lose. Have we got the people who are good enough to get on the end of those? Mm. Don't think that game. I don't think that game plays in this flick on them, whatever, doesn't work anymore. Teams play such a high line. Goalkeepers sweep, sweep up 90% of the stuff that, that's going to carry through. Um, you know, everyone everyone runs at me. I love Washington. I think he's a great player. And everyone's going to moan and say, oh, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. He doesn't get the service. Mm. He makes, he makes, you know, he reminds me run, the runs he makes, is Simon saying. Intelligent runs all the time, never gets the ball. Mm. Never gets the ball. In the end, he just turns around and gives up because he's being asked to do things that are not natural to him. Uh, and, and I think the times when he has played well is when they are pushing it down the channels to him and he can get on it. But um, I really like him. <laughs> Sorry, I've watched him loads of times. But, uh, you know, and people say, oh, look, he ain't got the ball. Oh, look, he's not running after that. No, he's not running after that because you're trying to pull him deep. He needs balls played down the side of people. I get what you're saying. That's where he's good. I get what you're saying, Peter. But I mean, and the fact is, he's a striker, and uh, yeah, I mean, that, maybe that's because of the reasons you're saying. But I, th- I think it's nine goals without a game now. Yeah, nine, nine, nine goals, games without a goal. goal yeah. Yeah. yeah, and who, and who's scoring? And who else is scoring then? Well, that's the thing. We, we, they've sort of been shared around. Um, mm. But I mean, obviously, we didn't score. Um, Luongo's got one. Well, service is a problem. We've been saying yeah, that for the twenty yeah, minutes. Yeah. The twenty minutes before we came on, we said exactly the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. exactly the same thing. So, so interesting. But they haven't. There isn't one set way of playing. I mean, Venables. We set ourselves out. We have worked it to death all week, and we. He never talked about the opposition. Where they, what they did from free kicks, corners, things like that. Yes, but. Even if it was Man United, it weren't, we've got to stop him playing or we've got to go and do this to him or you've got to go and do a job on him. It was like, right, this is how we're going to play. Let's see how they deal with it. Mm. And Venables never mentioned it at half time. He, was, he didn't mention anything about it because it had gone. Well, he would come in and say what, how we could do better than we did in the first half, what they were doing and how we could exploit it. Mm. It's no good. You've got 15 minutes. Don't waste your time saying you should have done this, you should have been there, you should have gone there, you should have done... It's gone. Pointless. Mm. Uh, Venables was brilliant at that. He'd analyse it all after the game. But, uh, but during the games... And we always had a plan B. We always had a plan B. This is like the last two podcasts, Peter, what you're saying. Sorry? Well, we've just been discussing all these things this week and last week, saying exactly what you're saying. Perhaps a lack of plan B, lack of service. Um, yeah. So, so, so maybe, but maybe. Uh, it's obvious maybe, to everybody. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, but it, it seems to be obvious to everybody. Um, and yet, I don't see. Uh, you know, and I love his passion, and we all love his passion, and we all love his madness. <laughs> Do you want that? Do you want to win games? Okay, Peter. So. So b- before you go, then, what one thing would you do if you were Ian Holloway to to sort of uh, t- to improve performances and results? Uh, I would stick to the same. I, I would work out what my best form my best formation is, and I I don't think you can ever beat four four two. Every formation is basically four four two. Whatever people say, it's just how good you've got a player playing in that you know in that position. Because if you go back when to the 75 team Stan never played up front he played off the front man but we, but we played 4-4-2 he, he was the one who would play off John Givens 
you know, and he was, he was, if you like, your Washington, he was a player, or I, I understand he's got a thousand times more school, I don't get me wrong, but he was a player with defeat down the side of people, testing them. Um, so I would, I would work out what I want to play, I would work out what I'm going to do, and I would keep the same team Stop apart from it. injuries, obviously, um, for, as, for as many games as I put. All this getting tired, please, please. Come on, we trained half the time of them, played more games. They're, they're a million times fitter than we were. And you're not telling me he's got that quick. Yes, it is better. But you look at the state of these players, they're massive. Uh, and you're telling me they can't play three games in a week, or they can't play 45 games a season or 46 games? Come on. They shouldn't be, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be athletes. They shouldn't be... Pro- if they can't do their job, their job is to play every week, surely. Peter, fascinating listening to you. We could talk all night, but yep. we can't because we've got to finish <laughs> off our podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks um, for coming on, big man. You've been on a few times. Please do come on again. It's always great to yeah, hear from you. Like. And um, it was great to see you back on the pitch at halftime during the Ipswich game as well. You're, yeah. you're always very welcome by the fans Thank at Loftus Road. Yeah. Come in the studio one time, Peter, when you get a chance. Yeah. Yeah, great. well, whenever. I'm, I'm fine. You'll be in cool. CF fans. Yeah. Cheers, Peter. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Take, Take care. care. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. 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 Wow. I never thought I'd hear Washington compared to Stain Road. That's an interesting one. Not saying I've thought of it. Well, and I like Washington, obviously, I'm biased, but Stain Road was different class, personally yeah, speaking. I mean, I, I did get what he was saying. I mean, you know, but... Like I said, he did, he was through, and he made the chance himself, on he was clean through twice, not clean through, but I mean, you know, he, he could have taken it on himself and both times because of the lack of confidence, he, he chose to pass it or square it instead. Um, well, you're assuming lack of confidence. It could well, no, be I lack am. of judgment. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Ooh, May- that's a good one, David. Well, maybe, maybe. maybe. I, I like Washington, but there was a point with uh, Chiron Cherry last year where we turned around after a number of games and said, Maybe he's just not as good as we think he is. Fair point. Which I'm not saying that is with Washington, mm-hmm. but I think he either needs to move on from this lull pretty quickly, or maybe he's, t- he's not tell you what's what interesting. he's going to be. Going back to Paul's point earlier on about Furlong getting booed and various people get never heard any real. Despite Washington, he's not not he's not really scored for quite a while, and he keeps getting run the team. Never heard anyone really moaning about him. Oh, I think there was last year. Yeah, you yeah, get was, yeah. so you get a few people on Twitter man about Washington, but okay, no, day, I mean, I mean, booing. Oh yeah, or, booing. Yeah, no. I've not seen it myself, but he's a workhorse. I think mm. he does put mm. a shift in, Mackie, and they yeah. all chase the ball. So will Mackey, but they're just not good finishers. So, do you know what we need? I dare say it again. We need a natural finisher, a, ben, a Spencer, a Bannister. Someone An Austin, Charlie Austin. Yes, yeah. but every ninety-two. Club, I'll show you ninety-two clubs in the year that in, in the league that need that. Yeah, but how many clubs will only go up if you score or create like yeah, so many if goals? The, if they can find a finisher, they'll sign him. It's well, about look, finding but, them. Yeah, but look at Sheffield Wednesday. I've watched them against Sheffield Wednesday. I know it's off subject, but they had Jordan Rhodes on the bench and they had two proper strikers up top, and yet they could done four-two at home. So yeah, we this, this league's Sam weird. Winner as well, weren't we? Mm. Um, in the transfer window, but he went elsewhere, didn't he? Went to another club, I think. Um, the, the, there's got to be someone right. out there. There's got to be someone that can come in and score the goals we need. There has to be. Well, or we he, need to give someone confidence to do so. Mm. Well, I, 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 one, one thing I, you know, um, what Pete was saying um, about <laughs> I've lost me thread. <laughs> Why don't, whilst you think about that, crowbar it into your R's end, Chris, because yeah, you, you're still recovering from, mark the date in your diaries, 25th of September was the day that you talked about spunking a load of cash to an extra QPR player. Okay. Do you, um, know, do you know what my most embarrassing moment is at football? What, what's wrong with that? Like, is it, uh, don't worry, Chris, it's fine. It's nearly as bad as anything I would say. But yeah, exactly. Worse. You but, said worse. But yeah. do you know when I was a kid? Not much worse, when, when but I was, you said worse. In the days when I had her, like young Harry over here, um, and I was at Rangers one day and Seaman was in goal and everyone kept shouting come on Spunky and I turned around in my best Northern Irish just left the country over in the boat green as anything went eh where are you going to call Spunky <laughs> to be answered his name's Seaman yeah. and I was I like, don't get it no well fair we enough. do have younger listeners um right <laughs> um Not that long <laughs> best joke from 1995 why why is Naeem an amazing footballer 
Why is Naeem oh, got loads yeah. of skills? Because he can lob semen from 50 yards. If you were around in 1995 yeah. or whenever it was, you would get that joke. Right, R's end. He scored against us, wouldn't you know? R's end. Um, well, go on, Chris. Anybody want to say anything? I do, but as usual. Go on, Chris, you say yeah, something. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm still trying to remember what, what I was thinking about. So you carry on. I need to think. Uh, well, then let's not do them. I don't really have that much else to add, and yeah, I don't me, see yeah. why we would need to prolong the podcast. Johnny. Very quickly. <laughs> um, I thought the next game was Fulham, but it's not. We're away tomorrow night, are we? Yes, yes. I'm driving there. So we're uh, playing Barnsley. Barnsley. So I think following the last couple of, ga- couple of home games that I've seen, I wouldn't want to be too despondent, being the fact that we started better than I think a lot of people thought we would at the start of the season. Mm-hmm. But I think with the injuries that we got, I'm not sure that people should expect too much and get on the back of the team. So I'm not hoping for some you know, a great run of results while we've got this run of injuries. But you know, as long as we can, um, you know, not not lose as many um, you know games than um, than we've got, then I think we'll consolidate in mid table. And I think that's got to be a positive. I think that, got that's to... what I was going to say for my eyes. And similar to that, this international and in break. Need, and I am in a rush. This international break needs to come along in a hurry because we had Lynch and Corker on the bench, which I guess is a good sign that they're two f- defenders starting to get fit, but we really need it. We need to literally hobble our way through to this international break. Are we doing break, predictions? Have two weeks off and then get some more players fit. We will do the predictions. Dale, did you have anything for the R's end? Um, yeah, I think you guys have summed up there. It's just patience key. Last season, we've definitely shown progress. Um, I still don't think Holloway knows where his best 11 is. He's still trying to find who that might be in terms of the front two. Um, But I think at the moment, Mackie and Washington are probably the best we've got. Um, So just my eyes would be just to keep patience. Mid-table finish for me would be nice. Um, So don't, yeah, if the next few results don't go the way as planned, we've got a few injuries. Um, Don't be jumping on the bandwagon on Twitter saying Holloway out because that's always what happens. Just that be patient yeah. um, and will. accept there's a few injuries <laughs> and we'll see what happens at the end of the season. Yeah, Chris, I mean, have I, you now remembered yeah, what re- you re- wanted re- to say? Yeah, I, I remembered because yes, both those guys basically said, the, basically what Hucker said was, yeah, you drew nil nil against Burton, but you didn't lose like we did last season. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. We're, you couldn't be any more mid-table, really. We're 11th, uh, zero goal difference. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, um, the, yeah. yeah. The two things yeah. I was going to say. First of all, I mean that was the world's worst pitch invasion on Saturday. That bloke oh, yeah, just, yeah, it, just sort of suddenly appeared from nowhere and just strolled on and was just hanging around. And everyone was like, oh, "Hang on, there's a bloke." I mean, why is I mean that was bad. Yeah. That was yeah. bad. Really crowd bad. management really. and security. Well, well. The, the worrying thing about that was they mentioned security, security yeah. reasons, bring your yeah. bags. He wandered on. There was fifteen. Burton fans and 30 stewards beneath them and yeah. the 30 stewards were like oh, I think it's over to you Roger <laughs> yeah. oh, definitely you I, David I noticed no increase in security whatsoever. no not yeah, at all not, not at all if all. anything it was worse it was actually <laughs> right can I are you finished your RSN um, no, no. I, I, I had one thing to say somebody asked me to say near where I sit uh, this is a very much uh, committee meeting as Ellerslie Road toilets type thing to say but um, I think it's I don't uh, lower loft PL uh, four rows up I think it's D135 there's a massive drip and it's been there last season as well and the poor bloke in front just by the end of the by the end of the day is absolutely soaked and pe- there's just a big hole around there because people just have to move away from it so if you are listening QPR could you send your maintenance people over there and uh, plug it up please there you go plug it up plug it up Paul that- Right, I'm going to be very, very quick. I don't Just believe that for a minute. Yeah, yeah. First of all, my, my, my first R's end is, yeah. I'm very sorry, again, I'll mention him, Colin's Motors. I walked in this morning, I was very chirpy, and I saw Jack, my mechanic, on in the white horse on Saturday. I said, what does it mean when you start your car and a big puff of smoke comes out? He was like, yeah, yeah, head gas, it's gone. So I've been worried all week about it. So I apologise. I went, turned up there at 7 o'clock this morning, and then we talked QPR, and I depressed him. They started off the day, 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm walking in there, and I think I might have depressed him a bit, so I apologise. My second point is, I'm... Well, sorry, where are we? What, what, what was the first what point? What is this podcast about? <laughs> what? It's a Collins Motors yeah, podcast. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So, but anyway, the QPR fans, lovely fellas. Anyway, my second point, a yeah. bit more serious, I'm desperate to go to Sunderland, and I'm driving to Barnsley tomorrow night. Go on. I, I have a solution for you, actually. Seriously? Because yeah. I, need, I, need, I need two spaces. So I need to go to how, how big are you in the car? <laughs> um, you can fucking talk. I <laughs> slightly overweight. Yeah, no. I 
I have I have a solution for you, but if you, we don't find that, Paul needs a lift to Sunderland. And I have one last hour's end, <laughs> and that is, and I'm, I'm serious. Don't laugh, Chris. No. This is deeply serious. Okay. If you find the player is not playing well at Rangers, why don't we try reverse psychology and cheer them? Let's stop booing people. We're not spoiled brats. The money, yeah, the money killed us. Stop behaving like spoiled brats. We expect to win every game. We're QPR for Christ's sake. We used to lose to fucking Bury when they were shite. Non-league clubs in the FA Cup. We lost to a fucking car plant in the FA Cup for Christ's sake. Stop the expectations of every team that turns up at Loftus. We've got to beat them. Let's get behind the lads. And on Friday, give Fulham absolute dogs abuse. Make that place as hostile as possible within the boundaries of the laws of the game. No violence. And make it hard for their bastards. Throw wins, corners, give it to them. Because we've got to take Loftus Road back and we've got to give the opposition hell. Because there's no point us moaning the players when we're not doing our bit. Do our bit and they'll respond. Thank you. Now you can give your predictions for Barnsley and Fulham. Ah, thick. Um, well, I'm going to Barnsley tomorrow night. I'm driving there. I think I'm mad. I really do. I mean, there's nothing even to do in Barnsley. Predictions. <laughs> Predictions. Predictions. Anytime you're ready. Predictions is I'll park up there and there'll be nothing to do. And I'll end up going to that sports club like you always do and sitting there bored shouting for an hour before the game. Scores. I, I think we'll, I think it'll be 2 all. Fulham, may we girls go. May we go. She's 16. God help her. She's going with her mate. We're all going down there. We're going to Nando's. We're all going to have a nice drink before the game. And hopefully we will stick it right up there. Arrogant butler arse. What do you have in Nando's? Uh, I can only have butterfly chicken because of my celiac disease. Yeah. Good, though. It's good. It's good. But good. Wait, I, I'm what, level of, what level of sauce? What level oh, of very pig? hot. Yeah, good. But I think, Fulham, we, would, we, we, we can hand with them. We can do this. We need to have the one game that can turn the season and it's Friday at uh, Dale based on injuries um, I'd take a draw against Barnsley one or two I think it's a Sorry, fair Josh. prediction Josh. Fulham can go either way it's obviously a cup game for both sides but I'd be optimistic it's say it's one or it's never a bloody cup game for us like, we never <laughs> no take we don't turn enough. up but, um, I reckon against Fulham's shape if, if Lynch or Cork are fit I think that can make a massive difference um, but I'd say yeah one or QPR but give them hell, lads, and let's Johnny, give them hell. Johnny, I think we'll win both games. Um, Whoa. I mean, Whoa. sorry, no, I mean, Demir, no, like, let's I'd, love, on. I'd love to believe that we could win both. <laughs> well, of course, games, we can, Johnny. It's Barnsley and Fulham. It's I not Real Madrid and Barcelona. I think, we'll, I think we'll lose two one at Barnsley, and I think we'll win three nil on Friday. I'll take three nil. Chris, because I won't, because I'm not going to be there, so that probably. Will. Oh, yeah. really? Okay, fine. I'm, I'm not either. Same reason. We'll leave that as a riddle. I know the reason. Yes, I know the Chris. reason. <laughs> uh, Paul, yeah. I just wanted to check. Uh, I didn't quite catch the name of that garage, Paul. If you could just say it again. <laughs> Collins Motors. Uh, open oh, yeah, thank open you. from 7am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, 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 Mark Royal. We're very happy to see me. I think I depressed him. <laughs> I'm going to go 1-1 one, one and 3-1 to us on Friday. I think we will win tomorrow. I... I, d I don't think we'll win on Friday, so I'm going 1 1. So I'll go 1 0, 1 1. But please, 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 please <laughs> get a good atmosphere on Friday. It's a London derby. Don't make it like a morgue. Give them absolute dog's abuse. That'll do. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been Open All Ours. UPR.